group is reading This is How It Always Is by Lori Frankel. It's a lively story about a young family with four boys. The mother is a doctor and the dad is a writer. They live in Madison. It all starts with the usual chaos one would expect with four little boys and two working parents. There's never enough time for anything. The kids are running wild in the house. Parents are hanging on and doing the best that they can. As their youngest Claude turns four, he starts to create dresses out of long t-shirts. At preschool, he loves the princess gowns and the tiaras and the dress up bins the best. It's Madison, it's liberal. The parents think it's just a phase and nobody blinks an eye. For his first day of kindergarten, he comes happily down the stairs, ready for school, wearing a dress. His parents tell him repeatedly that those are just play clothes and ask him to go get ready for school. After four or five reminders to him, he finally screams in reply, I am ready for school and this is what I wanna wear. As you can imagine, the family begins to discover that their son Claude feels his identity to be more feminine. And the book is about their journey of accepting their child for who she is. Over time, even in liberal Madison, there are some physical threats made to their child. The mother painstakingly researches other communities and decides Portland is where they can live without judgment. They move across the country. And from that day forward, everyone only knows their child as Poppy, a girl. Meanwhile, their other boys are struggling with having had to move and also hiding their younger sibling's identity. The parents carry this secret tightly in their chests. But one day, as one might expect, the secret's out and Poppy's life and her family's lives are forever changed. Secrets, we all hold secrets, some bigger than others, some shared, some left untold. Carl Jung, a 19th century psychoanalyst, understood that our shadow self is where we hide the parts of ourselves we're too ashamed to show the world. I think in today's world, this separation of who we show the world and who we really are on the inside is even more separated by the use of social media. We can often create a life online. How many likes people receive only encourage more facades to be built. I wonder and I worry about young children today whose every life moment now requires a picture and a posting before it's even real. I wonder about folks who spend more time creating this image of a life than actually living their lives. What might our shadow self be, you might wonder? For some of us, it might be big and challenging issues that we've struggled with for years, such as abuse or addictions or sexual identity, maybe depression or other mental health issues. For others, it may be less challenging, but perhaps still troubling. Maybe it's the way we're quick to judge others or we feel the rise of racist thoughts, even if we know that it's not in keeping with our larger view. Maybe it's never feeling good enough or feeling like we don't belong. For me, more recently, it's trying so very hard not to let feelings of hate and emotion I rarely feel seep into relationships with loved ones who support a leader that I cannot abide. Psychologist Ann Solomon says that even if we bury our shadow self, that side of ourselves doesn't go away by repression or denial. We may be spared the conscious knowledge of it, but it goes on to an influence what we do. It lives in our hidden agendas and secret intentions. Solomon says that to deny our shadow self is to live in unreality. Denying our shadow can amount to living a half life unable to live honestly and with fullness and intention. Growing up is difficult for all of us. Most of us tried hard to fit in and followed the crowd, even if it went against our nature sometimes. I always kind of admired those kids who seemed okay being different or they stood out. I'm sure it wasn't easy, but it looked like they were more connected to themselves than some of the rest of us. 
As Poppy's secret is discovered at her school, she faces horrible bullying and shame. Friends and neighbors feel betrayed by her and her family for the lies and the secret they hid from them. Poppy gives up being a girl and shaves her head and goes back to being Claude. Somehow it seems easier for everyone else. But Claude is an identity that no longer fits anymore either. And Poppy, Poppy was clearly too dangerous and shameful for her family. Claude becomes depressed and struggles in school. He stays home too much and hides in his bedroom most of the time. His light and his spirit and his soul are slowly being diminished. Carl Jung reminds us that the shadow's darkness is a result of its being deprived of the light of consciousness. He says that no part of the self is inherently bad, although we're certainly capable of doing bad things. I suspect that terrible things can gain a foothold within us when we deny the reality of our darker inner self. But our shadow's darkness is a result of it being deprived of the light of consciousness. The idea of this whole sermon came from a sentence I read somewhere. I wish I could find it again, but I only wrote down the sentence and nothing more. It said, divinity grows in the actions of our shadow self. I was so taken by this thought that divinity grows in that darkness. I think this might be another way of understanding what Jung was saying about depriving the shadow of the light of consciousness. If I bring my shadow out of its hiding place and into the light, divinity and godliness can grow within it. We know this to be true as we see this at work in AA and recovery groups, quietly and diligently going to support groups to share honestly about the darkness and shame around addiction brings it out into the light, brings it into connection brings in acceptance and love and healing. And if that's not divinity, I don't know what is. I see this in the hard work that folks do in therapy, trying hard to make sense of pasts that harmed and hurt them, pulling those memories and patterns out of dark closets, learning to hold them up to the light and gently parse out the gifts that were given in those hardships and then letting go of the parts that no longer serve or only harm. My sister Donna has always felt like someone on the outside looking in. She's a smart, funny, and talented artist, but she struggles mightily with social interactions and she's often confused by them. She grows anxious as she tries to sort out what others expect of her and how to respond. She'd much rather be alone where everything feels safe and makes sense. She's in her late 60s now, and she has forged with great effort a life where she's found joy and a sense of purpose. As I know her so well, I know that there are walls up in places that are there to help her feel safe. About five years ago, she began to learn more about autism, and she found a sense of what was really going on with her. She's mildly on the spectrum but enough so that she's carried this sense that something was wrong with her for all these many years. Just knowing why now has given her a sense of relief, a sense of bringing this thing that felt broken and wrong out into the light of understanding and it's helped. This awareness has given her a lot of peace. But divinity, divinity revealed itself when a great niece started to show evidence of mild autism. My sister was so taken by this struggling, smart, angry, gentle, wild child that the two of them grew very close. Sylvie calls Donna, my Donna. And their shared understanding of how they are in the world makes them love one another unconditionally in ways that only they can truly understand. Even in COVID times, they Zoom together, passing art projects and stories back and forth between their homes. Together, they love their difficulties and their challenges in divine ways, because together they are bringing their shadow out into the light. Psychologist Ann Solomon says that human consciousness does not really emerge at any depth except through struggling with our shadow. 
It is in facing our conflicts and contradictions that we mature. She says, we largely remain unconscious as human beings until issues come into our lives that we cannot control or fix. When we're forced to expand and deepen our understanding, we come into full consciousness by accepting and embracing our shadow self, we can begin to truly know ourselves. Beloved poet Mary Oliver said, this is the first wildest and wisest thing that I know, that the soul exists and is built entirely out of intention. I wanna pause and say that again because it's deeply profound. The soul exists and is built entirely out of intention. The soul is built out of intention. Now, as you use, I'm sure every one of you has a different idea about the soul, what it is, if it even exists, where it lies, what happens after our bodies let go of it. I'm not about to try and put name or even reason to any of that today. Those are thoughts for you to hold. But I am loving this idea that the soul is built of intention. We decide to give intention to what exists in our soul, in our core. I would expect all of us would want love and kindness and justice and peace to be things that we strive with intention to create in our lives. Those are things that transcend time and are eternal, perhaps like a soul. And yet those are also the Facebook, Instagram things that we hold up to others to say, yes, yep, this is who I am. This is who we are as a family or a congregation or even a denomination. But what would happen if we would add our shadows, our baggage, our challenges, our heartaches or things that many might consider to be brokenness? What if we bring that with us, with intention, so that it can create and connect us to each other in understanding. What if we bring the divinity of our darkness with intention to our souls? For me, this feels more real. This feels honest. This feels actually very, very holy. Early in our reading by Gazelle Graham, she said, if you show your scars, people will come and they'll sit with you and they will listen. This is how we heal each other, by living gently, by walking vulnerably. If you show your scars, people will come and sit with you. Just like how people across the world sit in stale windowless church basements telling their truths in support groups and showing their scars to each other. It works and it helps and it is holy, holy work. I have some wonderful friends in my life, some who I jokingly say if I called them in the middle of the night and I said I needed help hiding the body, that they would come. No questions asked. These are friends in which we have shown our scars to each other. And instead of feeling shame about them, we've learned that the skin of the scar is thicker and stronger and nothing to be ashamed of. Claude went with his mother to Thailand. She worked for a medical practice that sponsored a clinic and it was her turn to serve some time there. Claude had stopped going to school by then. He was depressed. His mom figured taking him along was better than leaving him behind. He was lost and he didn't know who he was anymore. In Thailand, he found solace in teaching English to young children while his mom was busy at the clinic. He used storytelling, a skill he had learned from his dad to teach them words and it worked. The children loved him and looked forward to spending time with him. Eventually, Claude's depression started to lift and he naturally began to return to Poppy, the identity that brought joy and a sense of place in his world. The children didn't mind. They loved Poppy as much as they loved Claude. 
And in the end, Poppy dispelled her fear. And I read directly from the book now. She tamed what was scary about herself, not by hiding it, not by blocking it, not by keeping it a secret, but by reminding herself and everyone else to choose love, to choose openness, to think and be calm, that there are more ways than just two, that there are wider possibilities than hidden or betrayed, stalled or broken, male or female, right or wrong. She learned that there are middle ways and that there are ways beyond. After what we've experienced this week as a nation, may we all remember to choose love, to choose openness, to think and be calm, that there are wider possibilities and that perhaps to heal, we need to consider middle ways with intention and with gentle grace Bring your shadow self out into the light. Show your scars. People will come. They have them too. And they'll sit with you. And they'll show you theirs. And in that action is divinity. May it be so.